Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel all about VLSI. In this video, we are going to discuss about wrap 8 and increment 8 bursts. So in our previous video, we have seen how the wrapping bursts are working and how to calculate the address boundary and what is meant by wrap 4 and what is meant by INCR4. That and all we have seen. Now in this particular video, let us try to understand what do you mean by wrap 8 and uh, INCR8 and how to calculate this uh, kind of address boundaries with one more example. Okay. So in this particular case, let us consider this wrap 8. So in the case of wrapping burst, we already know the address will wrap around to the initial address that we have already seen. Now, let us say in this particular example, uh, where your the burst is wrap 8, we have a wrap 8 burst with us and uh, the size is word, H size is basically word. So word means it is 4 byte. So we have a 4 byte uh, thing, H S is equal to 4 byte and uh, it is a wrap it. Now here the address boundary is uh, 8 into 4 that is 32. So here the address boundary is 32 byte. Now we need to uh, find out the initial address and uh, what is the wrapping address. Uh, here if we can see the, uh, the starting address is 34 and it is going to 38, 3C and they are coming back to 20. So let us find out what is the address boundary and uh, what is the starting address. Let us find out. So let's say our starting address is 0. Or in this example, uh, they have given the address as 20. Okay. So let's say our starting address is 20. Our next address will be 24. Why it is 24? Because the size is 4 byte. Our next is 28. Next is 2C. And followed by next uh, 30. 3, 4, 3, 8 and 3C. If you carefully observe, if you carefully observe here, this particular address is uh, corresponding to 4 byte of data. This is 4 byte, this is 4 byte address, this is 4 byte address, 4, 4, 4, 4. So total, this is a 32 byte address range and this is a 32 byte addresses. And this is our boundary 0, 3C. Okay. So this is our boundary. So after reaching this address, after reaching this address, the next address will not be 40, but the next address will be wrapped, wrapped to the initial address. That is nothing but our 20. So that's why in this particular example also, if you can see the initial address is 34, that is they are starting from here and next address is 38 and next is 3C. And after that, the next address is 20. They are wrapping back to the first address of this particular boundary. That is nothing but 20. And they are again going to 24, 28, 2C, 30, so on. So this is how we are going to calculate the address boundary in the case of wrap 8 burst. Now, in the case of INCR 8 burst, we already know the number of beats are equal to 8. That is in a single transaction, we are going to send 8 number of packets. And we can see here the initial address is 34 and the next address is 36. 38, 3A, 3C, 3E, 4042. There is no wrapping back to the initial address in the case of incremental burst. In the case of incremental burst, we are keep on going until we reach a 1KB address bond, which is allocated for that particular slip. So in this particular case, there is no wrapping back to the initial address and we are going on incrementing. So this is about your wrap 8 burst and increment 8 burst and in the case of increment 8 burst and if you can see it is half word half word means it is 2 byte so that's why if you can see the initial address is 34 next is 36 next is 38 3a 3c 3e so this is how we are going to calculate the incr eight in rapid uh, burst so if you haven't watched the previous lectures, I recommend you to please rewatch the previous videos where we have discussed how to calculate the address in the case of wrapping burst and what do you mean by wrapping burst, how to calculate the wrapping boundary and what is the difference between wrapping and incremental burst. Okay, this and all things we have discussed in our previous sessions. Uh, you can find it out in the playlist section of our YouTube uh, thing. You can find it out in the playlist section. So in the playlist section, uh, there will be AHB, uh, AMBA AHB recordings part 2, it will be present. The title is AMBA AHB part 2. You can rewatch the uh, previous videos from there. Okay. So that was about your INCR 8 and wrap it. Now coming to undefined length burst, that is INCR. So in the case of undefined length burst INCR, here the length is unknown. Okay. The length of 
is unknown that is we don't know how many beats we are going to send the slave will slave don't know how many beats the master is going to send for example in the case of incr4 or in the case of uh, uh, incr8 or in the case of wrap8 the slave knows how many bits of data the master is sending here in the case it is sending four bits of data and here it is sending eight bits of data and here it is sending eight, uh, eight bits of data it is a wrap transfer wrap burst but in the case of undefined length burst incr the slave don't know how many bits of data the master is dealing with okay so in this particular case the slave don't know and uh, we cannot judge how many uh, bits of data the slave is uh, the master is going to send then how the slave and master are communicating with each other let us try to understand so let's take this particular example here in this case our in t0 to t1 cycle h trans is non sequential non sequential in the sense it is the first uh, data it is the first data in the transfer now the address is 20 and the right h right is 1 that means it is a right operation and the burst we are using is incr incr in the sense it is an undefined length burst and the size of each and every data packet is half word half word in the sense 2 byte okay and you for up to t1 to t2 cycle up to t from t0 to t2 cycle the size of the data is same and the burst of the transfer is same and so that's why we can see the first address is 20 and the next address is 22 because here the size is 2 byte how to calculate the size of next address and how to calculate the next address this and all things we have discussed in our previous sessions okay so up to t1 to t2 cycle we have uh, in the t1 to t2 cycle we have a transfer type of sequential now what is master doing is in t22 t3 cycle it is changing the transfer type to non sequential i will write down here in t1 to t2 cycle in t1 to t2 cycle the transfer type was non sequential in t1 to t2 cycle the transfer type was non sequential okay and it is a right operation and the size of the data okay very good and uh, all the addresses have been sent okay and in t22 t3 cycle the transfer type is sequential and correspondingly it has sent some address and uh, it, it is maintaining the right signal because your h read is one it is there is no wait state and h burst is incr that means it is an undefined length burst okay now if you can observe here in t3 to t4 cycle the master is changing the transfer type from sequential to non sequential again that means in the t2 to 3 t3 cycle the transfer has completed the transfer has completed and this t3 to t4 this is a new transfer this is a new transfer so that means in the first transfer the master has only sent two data packets the master has only sent two data packets and in the second transfer if you can observe the master and in the second transfer how we can say it is a second transfer because the transfer type is changing from sequential to non sequential if it has been changed from sequential to non sequential that means if we are using this non sequential then it is a completely new address so that's why from this transfer type we can judge whether the transfer has completed or not yet trans completed okay so this is a clue which the slave can use for judging whether the transfer has completed or not transfer or not completed so if the if the transfer type is changing from sequential to non sequential then the slave can judge the transfer the previous transfer has completed and the master has started a new transfer okay and here we can see in t2 to t3 cycle the transfer type is non sequential and t3 to t4 the transfer type is sequential again and t4 to t5 it is sequential okay and in this case it is sending only three packets and we can see here it is in t1 to t2 cycle the address is double two but in t2 to t3 cycle it is a completely new address that is five there is no relation between these two addresses so this is how a slave can come to know by by seeing the transfer type whether the 
transfer has completed or still not yet completed in the case of undefined length burst where the number of beats or the length has not been specified. So let us take one more example for understanding this. So let's say we have a simple master and a slave like this. So let's say if our master is sending is using INCR that is undefined length burst. We don't know how many packets of data the master is going to write or the master is going to read. Now using this H trans signal which is given to our slave using this H trans signal the slave will come to know whether the transfer has completed or whether the transfer is still ongoing. So let's say uh, we need to write down uh, we need to write down H write is equal to 1. We need to write down two packets of data. And we need to read three packets of data. This is our requirement. So we need to write two packets of data and we need to read three packets of data. So what is master doing for the first transaction? So this is first transaction or you can say this is transfer one and this is transfer two. In the first transfer, the master is writing two packets of data and in the second transfer, the master is reading three packets of data. This is a requirement. Now in the first transfer, the master needs to write two packets of data. How it is going to write? For the first packet, the transfer type it is keeping it as non-sequential. For the first packet, it is keeping the transfer type as non-sequential. And for the second packet, it is keeping the transfer type as sequential. Now, from the third packet, from the third packet, that is, it needs to read it. That means it is going to make this h write is equal to zero. That means transfer two has started. Transfer one is completed. But how will the slave will come to know transfer one is completed or not? So whenever it is going to start the transfer two, it is going to make the transfer type as non-sequential. It is going to make the transfer type as non-sequential. So the slave will come to know, okay, this transfer one has completed and the transfer two has started by the master. And if you observe, if we have already discussed this due to the pipelining nature of the AHB protocol, uh, after the master sends this transfer type, the slave has some time to decide. Okay. So this is done in the address phase and in the data phase, the reading will be done. Okay. So in the address phase, the non-sequential signal will be given by the master and in the data phase, the master will give the corresponding data according to the address which was provided by your master. Now, from the third packet, it is going to, and from the second packet, it is going to provide the transfer type as sequential. And again, sequential. And after this packet has been sent, it may go into idle state. The master can change the transfer type to idle state, or if it wants to start another transaction, then it might change the transfer type to again non sequential. So if it goes to idle, then the slave will come to know, okay, the master has completed the transaction transfer to also. And if it goes to non sequential also, the slave will come to know, okay, the slave, the master has completed the transfer to. So this is how the slave will come to know, uh, the, this is how the slave will, the slave can judge whether the transfer has completed or it is still ongoing by observing or by sampling the transfer type. So that's all about this particular session. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel, all about VLSA. Thank you for watching this video.